Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are on section 5.3 of unit five. Uh, remember unit five is all about graphs, um, but I'm not gonna actually have you do some graphing at home. Okay, on paper, we're gonna be using our calculator to do some of these graphs just to look at them. But for this first one, I'm just gonna remind you how all of this works. So in this section, we're gonna talk about the, the linear family, which you should be pretty familiar with because all of intermediate algebra was on the linear family. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve this equation for y and graph it. And don't forget the y equals mx plus b stuff, okay? Remember all of that? Remember that? All right, so first of all, we're going to solve for y. And in this problem, it's going to take two steps. Okay, the first step is to move x to the other side. Okay, so it's a positive 4x. So we're going to need to subtract 4x from both sides. And then we're going to rewrite it. Okay, so now we have negative 2y equals. Now, remember, you cannot put the 16 and the minus 4x together. Okay, they're not like terms. So we're going to rewrite this as negative 4x plus 16. I'm going to put the x immediately behind the equal sign so I follow the y equals mx plus b format. All right, the next thing we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is divide everything by negative 2. So what we end up with is y equals positive y, because the negative 2 is canceled, equals negative 4 divided by negative 2, that would be positive 2x, and 16 divided by negative 2, that would be a minus 8, or you could say plus negative 8. All right, so what is the slope? Okay, remember the slope is what is in front of the x. So the slope is 2. You could also say 2 over 1 because remember, ladies and gentlemen, slope is rise over run. Okay? And the y-intercept would be the negative 8. Now, if we were to graph this by hand, ladies and gentlemen, we would plot our y-intercept first at negative 8. So that is our y-intercept. And then the slope is telling it's positive, so that means it's up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Whoops. I didn't go up 2 over 1 on that one. Let me back up, up 2 over 1. And then we would draw our line. Let me do a better job than that. Draw a line through those dots. Okay. Now, we do have the option of using the calculator, which we're going to be doing instead of actually graphing them by hand. So let me go ahead and pull in the calculator quick. So in the calculator, we're going to go ahead and go to our y equals, and we're going to type in the 2 and then x. Okay, look at where the x button is in case you forgot. And then we're going to put the minus 8. And then we should just be able to hit graph. Nope, I can't hit graph. Okay, so I got to fix this. So if, that, if, if your graph does not show up, hit the zoom button and then the number six button, okay? So from now on, it will work. So that matches, ladies and gentlemen, the graph, if you look, that matches the graph that we drew. All right, so we're gonna be looking at them on the calculator instead of actually hand drawing them. All right, let's go to the next one. So we're gonna solve each of these for y. So again, two steps. In this one, we're going to subtract 2x. Again, remember, if I'm going too fast, hit the pause button, catch up, and then continue watching or rewind it. All right, minus the 2x. So I've got a negative 6y equals the negative 2x 
plus 24. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 6. The negative 6 cancels. I'm left with a positive y. Remember, we always want a positive y when we're done. Now, the negative 2 over negative 6, that becomes a positive 1 third x. Now, on the calculator, ladies and gentlemen, you can type in, okay, let me move this over a little bit. You can type in negative 2 divided by negative 6, but if you hit enter, it's going to give you a decimal, okay? So what you do next is hit your math button and then pick fraction and then enter. So now you can do that right from the beginning. You could go negative 2 divided by negative 6, hit your math button, pick fraction, and then enter, and it'll automatically reduce it for you. So that becomes positive one-third. So positive one-third x, and then this is going to become minus 4, okay? So y equals one-third x minus 4. And if you want to look at the graph of that, you certainly could. You could go to your y equals. You can type in 1 divided by 3 and then x minus 4. And you can look at the graph. Just hit the graph button and voila, there it is. That's what it looks like. Starts at negative 4 and goes up 1 over 3, up 1 over 3. All right, let's do this next one. So on this one, I'm going to add 5x to both sides. So 3y equals positive 5x minus 30. Then I'm going to divide by 3. Again, I end up with positive y equals. Now, 5 thirds, ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to be able to reduce that. Right? You can go to your calculator and you can type in 5 divided by 3 math, fraction, but it's not going to reduce it because it can't be. It's already reduced. So that's going to stay 5 thirds. So 5 thirds x minus, okay, and then uh, minus 30 divided by 3, that's going to be 10. All right, so that is solving for y so that we could easily type them in on our calculator and graph them and look at them. Again, we're not going to graph these by hand, so please check them with the calculator. Oh, and then I've got a couple things down here. So what is the slope? Okay, well, the slope is one-third. Do not include the x. And the y-intercept is negative four. Okay, on this one, the slope is five-thirds. And the y-intercept is negative ten. All right, let's keep going, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the next one. Ah, so use the point-slope formula to find the equation of the line. Y equals mx plus b. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we've got this lovely formula right here. It's called the point-slope formula. And we're going to use it to find the equation given those two points. Well, the first thing you need to know, though, is the first thing you have to do is you have to find your slope. And to find the slope, remember slope is m, you're going to have to take the y2 value minus the y1 value, divide by the x2 value minus the x1 value. Okay, remember that formula? You have to have that one memorized. Okay. That formula is never given to you on a formula sheet. That's one they expect you to remember. So if you need to label this x1, y1, x2, y2. All right, so here we go. So step number one, I'm going to find the slope. So I'm going to take the negative 3 minus the negative 6. Okay, look at it, y1 and y2. And then I'm going to divide it by the 4 minus the negative 2. Now, there is a sign change right here. This becomes plus positive. This becomes plus positive. 
All right, so now the numerator becomes a positive three over, it looks like 16. No, wait a minute here, hold on here, hold on here. Back this up. Okay, that's supposed to be, I got an extra line in here, folks. All right, this is supposed to be a two, not a 12, good grief. All right, so now plus positive, plus positive. There, that's better. Okay, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead, now this is gonna be a three, positive three over a six. There, that looks a lot nicer. And that reduces to one over two. Use your calculator if you need to. Okay, so now, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to go right there in the formula, okay? So you're going to plug that into the M, all right? The Y in the formula, well, well, here, let me back up. The Y1, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the negative 6, and the X1 is going to be the negative 2. The Y and the X that don't have that little number attached to it, you're going to leave those alone. So here we go. So I'm going to write Y minus, okay, Y1 is that negative 6 equals the slope, which is the half, and then parentheses X, leave that X alone, and then minus, and then the negative 2, which is x1. Okay, watch that again if you need to see how I plug those in. I do have a sign change here and here. And there. Okay, so now I'm going to use my algebra, and I'm going to simplify this. Okay, I'm going to simplify this. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to distribute that half. So... This is what I have right now. I've got y plus 6 equals 1 half x plus, now half, a half times 2 is 1, folks. Half of 2 is 1. Okay, one more step, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to subtract 6, and we're going to end up with y equals 1 half x minus 5. All right, now I'm going to check this answer with my calculator. So I'm going to type that 1 half x minus 5 into my y equals. So 1 divided by 2x minus 5. Now, how do I check to make sure I got the answer right? Well, see these two ordered pairs over here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the table. I'm going to go second y equals, or I'm sorry, second and then the graph button. And I'm going to look. Look, negative 2, negative 6, it's, it, there it is, negative 2, negative 6. And then I'm going to go look, is 4, negative 3 in there in the table? It sure is. Look, 4, negative 3. So I know that this answer is correct because I typed it into my y equals, and then I went to the table, and I was able to see these two ordered pairs over here in the table. So I know I got it right. Okay, let's do another one. And hopefully I won't mess up on this one. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the slope. So I'm going to label this x1, y1 x2, y2. So here I go. So I'm going to take the y2 value minus the y1 value and then the x2 value minus the x1 value. And I have one sign change on the bottom. That becomes a plus positive. All right, so let's see. The top is negative 15 and the bottom is positive 5. And then that simplifies to negative 3. So that's my slope, ladies and gentlemen. That's my M. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug the other numbers in. So the 13 is going to go right there. And this negative 2 is going to go right there. So here we go. Y minus 13 equals 
the slope, which is negative 3, times the x minus that negative 2, which is x1. Okay, again, don't touch the x and y that are just plain. All right, there's one sign change right here. That becomes plus positive. All right, and now I'm going to distribute. So now I have y minus 13 equals negative 3x minus 6. And now I'm going to add 13 to both sides. And I end up with y equals negative 3x. I believe that that is plus 7. Okay, now I'm going to check it. So I'm going to go, I'm going to put this equation, ladies and gentlemen, into my y equals. All right, so I'm going to put in negative 3x plus 7. All right, here we go. Negative 3x plus 7. Now I'm going to go to the table, second graph. And I'm going to look, is negative 2, 13 in the table? Sure is, look at there, negative 2, 13. How about 3, negative 2? Sure is, it's right down here, 3, negative 2. So I know I got that equation correct. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep going. All right, so we got to talk about a few other things here. We got to talk about parallel lines, okay? Write an equation that is parallel and four units above. Okay, well, first of all, to, to be parallel, you have to have the same slope. Okay, to be parallel, remember parallel they don't touch. So to be parallel, you have to have the same slope. So, and we want to write an equation that is four units above this one. Well, all you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is let me rewrite this up here. All you have to do, since it's going to be four units, whoops, let me write it correctly. It's going to be four units above. We're going to go ahead and add four to that negative five. And when we do that, ladies and gentlemen, we end up with f of x equals one-half x minus one. So that would be four units above. So these two lines are parallel to each other. Parallel lines have the same slope. Okay, parallel lines have the same slope. And you've seen that before. All right, again, if I'm going too fast, hit the pause button. Okay, let's do another one. Four units below, or not four, six, six units below, and it's parallel. Well, again, parallel, it's going to have the same slope. Okay, but six units below, that means I'm going to take away six from that constant in the back. And if I do that, that becomes a negative or minus 9. Boom, we're done. All right, one more. Let's look at perpendicular lines. Okay, perpendicular lines. Now, perpendicular lines, the slopes will be different. Okay, perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal, make sure I spell reciprocal right here, they have opposite reciprocal slopes. Okay, opposite reciprocal. Okay, so in this problem, folks, the slope is a 3. To be perpendicular, if you remember, the upside down, looks like an upside down T, that stands for perpendicular. To be perpendicular, the other slope is going to have to be Okay, well, first of all, reciprocal means to flip it. So that means the 3 is going to be on the bottom and there, there's going to be a 1 at the top. Okay, that's the reciprocal part. Now, the opposite part means it has to be the opposite sign. So that has to be a negative. All right. And this also says that it has to be 5 units above. Okay, well, that means I'm going to add 5 to the back of it. 
So my new equation is going to be f of x equals negative one-third x. And then 7 plus 5, that's 12. So that's going to be plus 12. Okay? If you didn't quite get that, watch that again. I am going to do one more example, and then that's it for the notes. All right? Here we go. So, perpendicular. So again, this slope, ladies and gentlemen, is negative one-half. To be perpendicular, I'm going to flip it, the reciprocal, so that means it's going to be two over one, and opposite means it's going to be positive, okay? Now, I don't need to put the one underneath. What else does it say? Seven units below. So I'm going to take away seven from that constant. So that means to be perpendicular to this, it's going to be positive 2x, and then let's see, 2 minus 7 is negative 5, so that's going to be a minus 5. So that's going to be perpendicular to that one. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good luck. I will see you in class to do the assignment.